Well, I won't be before you long at all. Somebody say amen to that. <laughs> Y'all are serious about it too, huh? Amen. But I'm going to say a few words to you so I can get you uh, to your next place of rest and relaxation. Uh, it has definitely um, been an interesting season for us, um, not only as a church, but as a country. And um, just want to share some things in relations to uh, all that we are going through to and what God is doing in our lives. And so I pray that um, you are paying attention um, to a lot of the things that have been shared already, but very particularly to what's being shared in this season. Um, man, God has been so amazing to us. He's been um, more than what we can ask or think. And so I'm grateful to be a part of what he's doing. Pray with me, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this moment this opportunity that we, your people, can gather in your place to hear what you have to say to us today. And so, God, do let the words that will come from my mouth, the motives of my heart, be acceptable unto you, God, for you are my strength and my redeemer. God, I'm also grateful for every person that would choose to hear this voice that you've given me. God, to proclaim the word of the Lord, I pray that they have ears to hear what you, the spirit of the Lord, has to say to the body of Christ today. And even that person that may not know you in the pardon of their sins, will God realize that they can no longer do life without you or life on their own. And God, we are so grateful and thankful that we have the privilege to share and to impart your word. And we're thankful and grateful for your word this morning. Why? Because it's your word that makes us new, your word that teaches us about you. So make it clear and make it plain. In Jesus' name, would you shout amen? Come on, give God one of those big praises you got today. Amen, amen, amen. All right, real loud and proud. Y'all know what time it is. Let me see them what? There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. All right, go ahead and somebody shout to your neighbor across the room and say, there you go with your Bible toting cell. Amen. Amen. I do want to uh, inform you that we will be making some minor changes over the next couple of weeks, just for those couple of weeks, um, to um, kind of help out with everything that's going on uh, in the world because we know that servants are uh, scarce at times and we want to make sure that we are able to proficiently um, do ministry and also protect uh, families as well. And so I'll be meeting with my leaders um, this um, this week, just to come up with a better, divisive, uh, defined plan on how we're going to continue to do ministry in the midst of everything that uh, is going. And so, God bless you all, and thank you so much uh, for your support. If you need a Bible, the ushers got you squared away, and um, you can let them know. But I feel like they already took good care of you. Will y'all give the ushers a hand right there, y'all, as they're going to readjust themselves? <laughs> amen. 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 Well, all right, here we go today. I want to teach again. This is week uh, number 15, and this is another uh, portion of the transformative message um, that I want you to hear uh, regarding the series of messages entitled Navigation. Somebody shout navigation. navigation. Amen. And I'm thankful for each of you who have made this a part of your life. You know, y'all have been taking this journey with us. Some of y'all, I mean, I met a young lady uh, who said, Pastor, I came on board the first Sunday I came, you was in Navigation 1, and I have not been able to disconnect from that since. And I'm like, glory to God. If God is doing anything in any individual life that will cause you to follow God's plan and purpose for your life, even the more, I am extremely grateful for it. And I'm thankful that this opportunity is where uh, what we got today is so important as well as we continue to navigate. I've been teaching on about where are we, and now I'm in the midst of where are we going. Because here in, in due season, um, we're going to be talking about how we got here. And when y'all hear how we got here, it's going to just mess you all up. Because what God has done in this season has been nothing short of amazing. But what I've discovered, y'all, is that when God is moving, there's also other elements at work that try to distract us from God's purpose for our life. 
Now, how many know that the enemy is not going to let you get to God's purpose for your life without trying to cause some pain in it? It's just going to happen. And I don't want you to ever assume that it's going to just be this scroll, this, 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 this stroll down blessed boulevard, that everything will be perfect. But when you face these issues that you already know where you're going, why is, that, why is this so important? Uh, I'm sharing something because during this season, there was vision cast for Rock Faith Center. And one of the notions that God has really imparted in us is that when there is vision, you won't assume a detour as destiny. A lot of times when we don't have clear, precise vision or direction where we're going, we can assume that a roadblock is where we're supposed to pitch a tent at. We'll say, man, baby, this is all God has for me. And God said, that's not what it is. But if you knew where you were going, if you had understanding about what my direction for your life was, you would not have gotten caught up in where you are. You would have kept it moving and pursued the purpose and the plans of God. And so today I want to teach on the subject in navigation titled Uncomfortable Change. And I found out that sometimes you could be Riding down the road, and you can think you're going the right direction. And all of a sudden, God said, you're going the wrong. And some of us be so stubborn, like, I ain't changing. But I discovered that change can sometimes be totally uncomfortable for us. Because what is change? Change is to make or to become different. And in the process of this navigation, I want us to have this complete understanding of something is that God has a way of making us uncomfortable by changing the way we think or even the direction we're heading or even the attitude that we represent. But God, in the midst of this, when it's time to change, most of the time it becomes so uncomfortable for us that we don't want to move or it causes an inconvenience that we don't want to compromise. And so here at this moment, as we look at the world today, as we just view all that has taken place in this current state, we realize that change is inevitable. We just experienced on yesterday one of history's most viewed and voted elections Come to a conclusion. I mean, they said more votes was cast and more people went to the polls or more ballots was mailed in than any other point in history, pretty much. And so we see that it presented something to us. It presented a change in power and in politics that the world will remember from this day and forever. But it also demonstrated how change can be so uncomfortable. And inconvenient. Amen. But it's something that we all must face. Anybody agree with that? And learn to handle it with the right attitude and the right character. See, when change comes in our life, we got to make sure that we get our, our, our character is always being tested when change is uncomfortable because un uncomfortable change builds unusual character. Somebody shout uncomfortable change. Bill's unusual character. And so as I thought about this, as we, as we embark on this journey, I want you to gain some understanding with me today how this change, this uncomfortable change, has a way of building our unusual character and causing, uh, calling, causing us to see God's grace and his goodness in every situation because it amazes me how God often put us in places that we're not comfortable with. So we can really rely on his comfort, on his wisdom, and his strengths. See, he puts us, I believe, in perfect position to say, you know what? It is important for you to understand that the uncomfortable place I put you in was designed for you to find comfort in me. For you to say that I can't get through this on my own, God, this is uncomfortable for me right now, and I need you to comfort me in my uncomfortabilities and cause me to go forward so I can see what you're trying to do in me. 
And so as I discover what's God been, what God has been doing in this season, uh, even in the midst of all the blessings, man, God has us even no more right now in an uncomfortable place. Like, like, like we're, we're like right there, but then things are changing. Things are happening. And some people are even wondering. But I'm like, God, you're doing exactly what you purpose to do. Like, you're, you're not a God of any mistakes. And I thought about something, y'all, as God is elevating us, as God is taking us to another level. I'm telling you, y'all, when you understand where we are as a ministry, where you are as individuals, I mean, where we are and what is being experienced is a, is a tail sign that God is elevating. I discovered something that when, it, when there's elevation, sometimes there's a moment of isolation. That God will have you feeling like you're by yourself. That you'll feel like, man, God, where is my support? God said, I need you to understand that where I'm about to shift you, I need your mind to change. And everybody that you may think will support you may not be supporting you. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you got the greatest support system that you could ever have, and that's in Jesus. And when I thought about this, when God elevates, he makes things uneasy. Oh, somebody shout at me and say, when God elevates, when God elevates. he makes things uneasy. And I discovered, man, that sometimes things get a lot uneasy. He's like, man, God, what happened? This thing was flowing, but like, God said, I'm going to elevate. You got to get, I'm going to make it uneasy. Uneasiness is a feeling of anxiety, trouble, or uncomfortabilities. See, the word itself, uneasy, represents that uncomfortable place that troubled place, that feeling of anxiety. But I found comfort in this scripture, y'all. We turn to John chapter 16 and verse number 33. Because I want you to navigate, we got to navigate through these moments, y'all. Because anytime you can't see your way, you got to come back to Christ. Like, I got to a point where, like, God, what's going on? God said, I need you to see my, I need you, I need you to seek my face on this, Eric. I need you to seek my face on this by your name, whatever you, you want to call. Uh, he said, I need you to be able to come back to me because when I'm elevating, I may cause things to be a little uneasy for you. But I'm building something on the inside of you that's far as seeds, anything that's happening around you. John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things that so in me you may have peace. In this world, you might have trouble. What did it say there? It said, what? You what? It says uh, trouble might come. It says, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. Somebody shout, take heart. See, when you see that word take heart, it simply means that you can't let something take your heart. Sometimes when you face trouble, you got to grab your own heart. Like literally, in the, in the mindset, you got to almost, hold on, <laughs> let me keep myself together. Because things are happening, but I can let my heart be troubled. Or I can take heart and know that it says, I have overcome. Somebody shout, he has overcome. It says, but take heart, I have, this, is, this is God talking, he said, I have overcome the world. And so anytime things get uneasy for us, he says, look, I need you to already go back to understanding that, that this ain't the first time you heard this was going to happen. He said, as you're going through the paths and the journey of life, I need for you to understand I have already told you these things. That, 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 so that when you know that I already spoke it, you can have peace in the middle of your trials. You can have joy in the midst of everything you're facing. And I thought about even in those uneasy moments because life gets uneasy at times. And some, so God says, you have to understand that I am speaking to you at every moment of your life. And sometimes when we get to a place of uneasiness or a place of what we have not experienced, sometimes we can listen to the noise and negatives and not listen to what God is really saying to our life. That's why he says, I've told you these things so that you may have Peace. I need for us to recall to our minds at times that God had already foresaw 
the things that we're facing. That it may was a surprise to you, but it wasn't a surprise to him. I, I know you, you may have said, God, I'm right at the precipice of accomplishing my great goal. And all of a sudden, something happened. God said, I need you to understand that I already predicted that this thing will happen. And if you miss it, some of us, man, we was right at the, the midst of promoting or maybe you was buying something or maybe you was about to close on something or maybe things happened in your life. He's like, what happened, God? God said, what I'm doing in your life right now is making this uneasy because I need you to know that I'm building your character in the midst of trying to get you to the next level because at the next place that I got prepared for you, I need for you to be even the more focused on who I am because you can't get sidetracked because there are going to be many more distractions at the next level of life and if you don't learn how to deal with things where you are and remember what I said, I'm the same God that will take you through and I'm the same God that has a promise to take you to and if you understand this, you You'll be comfortable or you'll, you'll, you'll find yourself comfortable in your uncomfortable moments. Why is this important? Because it says, in this world, you will have trouble. And when I thought about that, I said, God, you mean that after even the best moments, there's still a moment of trouble? Like, why, 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 why we got to, you know, sometimes be like, God, you ain't got to keep doing that. Like, God, you know, we just. I'm cool. Like this, this give me the good stuff. You know, this don't, don't, don't the trouble stuff. I just, I, I, you get that to that person I don't like, <laughs> or that don't like me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, <laughs> anybody want to pass your trouble on? You know, but God said, now that's this. This is made. This is just for you, because this trouble is about to transport you. How many know that trouble? I, I've taught this. That trouble is your transportation, and sometimes we try to avoid trouble. Amen. I ain't talking about you got to be a troublemaker. That's what I'm talking about. Because some of y'all like to talk trouble. I'm talking about you can't avoid trouble because trouble has a way of being your transportation to God's next for your life. When I tell you the truth, y'all, that as I understand some things and as we're navigating this thing, God said, in the midst of this moment, he says, this, in this world you will have trial. But I love this portion. He says, but take heart. Because what you could let get you down has already been overcame. Everything that could get you down, he said, just realize that you can overcome it because I've already overcame it. You can get through it because I've already conquered it. Oh, you can, you can, you can fight that one because all you got to do is understand your fight has already been fixed. Oh, anybody ever went into a fight and understand that your, 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 your fight has already been fixed for you? God said, what you trying to come against, what coming up against you, I already orchestrated the fight. I already gave you the victory over that thing. I just need you not to quit along the way so that you can see the try. See, what happens a lot of times, we quit before we gave God a try because as soon as it came uneasy for us or became uneasy for us, we exited. See, uneasiness causes some people to exit their purpose. Oh, you won't believe how many people I've met. I say, what happened? They say, it got too hard for me. You won't believe how many people have stopped their purpose in life because they said somebody was talking about me. I met people that say, I can't, I'm tired of folks talking about me. I am too. <laughs> I, I truly am, but I understand that I, I, this is how I always look at talking people. They call them barking dogs, right? And every time a dog barking at you, they're only barking at you because you're moving in a place that they can't go with you. And I'm telling you, if you, if you stop and you'll see about that dog, he'll stop barking. Why? Because he got your attention off of where you was going. Why does the dog chase the garbage truck? Amen. Every time the, every time the garbage truck stops, what he does? The dog stops. Why? Because there's nothing to chase after anymore. I'm telling you, people of God, you got to keep moving in the purpose of God because trouble is going to come, but you got to learn to take heart because what will come up against you has already been conquered. I had to remind myself of these things, y'all, because I faced some trials. I've been through some things. Oh, yes, I have. But I've learned to get not God, not, not my heart to stay right. Oh, my God. Oh, amen, somebody. Let my heart not become bitter. Let me not become something I'm not because I realize that there's a character that you're trying to build in this moment. 
There's a moment that, that, that I, I don't understand what you're trying to do or why you cause these things to happen. But he says, take heart. Because I overcome the world. But I had to go a little bit further with this because I'm asking God, like, you know, what's going on? Why, 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 why some time when you're trying to journey? Because I meet people uh, on a regular, they say, Pastor, every time it seems like I'm trying to take a step forward or trying to move forward in life, all of a sudden stuff starts coming out of nowhere. I said, well, that's just part of life. But you need to also understand that you got a God behind you that won't let you fail. Or oh, somebody shout, I got a God with me that won't let me fail. And I understand something a little bit different, y'all, because sometimes when you face trials, it feels like you're failing. When you had a troublesome time, don't it feel like, man, it's, I can't win for. And what happened is that that moment where you don't feel like you're winning. Sometimes you can put your life in rewind. You start going backwards. It's like, God, I ain't going to never make it. But I read in Luke chapter 1 and verse number 37 that really encouraged this particular segment. That's why I say uh, in this navigation, there are segments that is going to get us to a more significant point um, because I have to preach these. These are the hard ones because it, it, it actually sets us up for the next one. But I got to deal with some things internally because as I'm driving and I'm going towards God's purpose, right? And I'm pursuing God's plan for my life. And I'm assuming that everything is good. And then God tell you, you got to make changes. I'm like, you know, I don't want to. God said, if you don't make no changes right now, it's going to compromise your next. So you can change when you want to, and it may be too late. You can make the necessary changes in your life when you feel comfortable. Because how many know that sometimes making changes are not comfortable? See, I, 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 that's a subject, right? But I have to bring you to this moment because making those necessary changes can be totally uncomfortable for you. Yeah. It may not be. Like, I wish change was like, man, I make a change. It's like changing. It's like, it, 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 I wish it was like ordering a burger. No onions. Right. <laughs> but it ain't like that. It takes something out of you. It drains you. It haunts you. But God said it's better for you. And this is what I understood this in Luke 1 and 37. He says, for no word from God will ever fail. So when God tells you to change, oh, my God, when he, he, even though it may be uncomfortable for you, he says no word from me ever caused you to fail. Another verse says nothing you see is impossible with God. See, the world in its corrupt, sin-filled systems will try to sidetrack you, try to get you to see that, man, maybe you're not functioning in where you're supposed to. Man, because anytime you make changes, sometimes you think that failure is imminent. Because maybe you had to change some of your people around you. Maybe you had to change a career. Maybe uh, anybody ever had to change jobs and you didn't know how you were going to pay your bills next time? But God still supplied every one of your needs? I mean, sometimes changes will cause you to say, God, I don't know if I can function if I make this change in my life. But God said, if I tell you to change, not a plan I give you, not a word that comes from me will ever cause you to fail. He says that I will make those things that seem to be impossible for you possible. And that's why I understand, man, that in, in the midst of these moments, and I, as I'm navigating this thing, y'all, as I talk about unnecessary change, because we dealt with change and we saw the world acting up when change was inevitable. And I, I mean, and even as Christians, I have to be mindful that God, that when things don't go my way, it may be going yours. I'm going to say that one more time. God, I have to understand that when things may not be going my way, they may be going your way. 
And see, his ways are not our ways. Sometimes, matter of fact, most of the time, his thoughts are not our thoughts. Matter of fact, what God really wants us to do is maybe some things that we don't want to do and may not feel like doing. But I discovered some things, y'all, that when you are dealing with or understanding or how to navigate through uncomfortable change, you got to learn to deal with disappointment. You got to learn. Somebody shout, I got to learn to deal with disappointment. Now, disappointment, let me tell you something, because if you don't deal with disappointment right, it'll leave you in despair. It'll make you bitter. It'll make you a person that you don't want to be. And in that moment, you won't be prepared for what God has for you next. See, this is the midst of it all, man. When you don't learn how to deal with some disappointments in your life the right way, sometimes you got to learn how to say nothing sometimes. Sometimes you got to say, God, I'm going to just let you comfort my heart in the midst of this. Because one thing that is true about this and all of us is that we face disappointment at some area in our life. Amen, somebody. And we got to be very careful. Listen to me, y'all. You got to be very careful when you face disappointment that you don't get discouraged along the way. You got, I mean, this is a moment, this is a navigate. Like, when you're moving forward, you're going to face some disappointing moments. This is a pivotal moment in regards to how you walk with the Lord in every season of your life because you can either dwell on the negativity, which will cause you to stumble because your disappointment can easily drain you spiritually. I mean, you can be disappointed when you stop liking everybody. You could get so disappointed on your journey that you don't want to continue. And even though that God has sent people around you, he has sent, man, things in your life to keep you motivated, to keep you moving forward. But if you let disappointment get the best of you, you won't see God do anything else good in your life. You'll start thinking that everything that will come will be not for you. You'll think that everything that coming your way is against you. You'll be trying to get people first before they get you. I mean, you have all of these things going on in your head when you don't learn how to deal with disappointment. Amen, somebody. That's why you got to learn to cast your cares on God. When you're riding, this, when you're navigating this journey of living this Christian life, sometimes you got to say, God, I care, but I can't carry this. I got, I know that I'm going through some things right now, but I can't let this thing weigh me down because I know if it weighs me down, it's going to keep me from accomplishing the journey that you set me on. And I was reading in first Peter chapter 5 where it says something so awesome to us you can turn there with me real quickly I told you I won't be long today because I had to interject this message for us today so I can really get us to the next place because in this moment like right where we are right now as a church man we've dealt with some things we had to really navigate some life choices we had to make some decisions but for the better good of God is where God is going to show us that man I had orchestrated this before anything took place and I had to understand that God it wasn't for us to uh, us to boast or have any other uh, other thought about but it's to humble ourselves see God takes us through some uneasy moments to humble us to really say to you do you can't do this without me look what it says in verse number six right there in first Peter 5 it says humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in what? Due time. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And I thought about in a moment of disappointment and despair that has a moment when you're facing despair you got to cast it on someone who cares. Because what may have disappointed you was the fact of the matter is that you thought that they didn't care about you. You thought that they didn't have your best interest at hand. And it did whatever it was supposed to do to you, but it didn't have to change who you are as a person. And what you got to learn, in order for you to learn how to deal with disappointment, you got to learn not to carry that stuff around. You got to learn to say, God, you know what, I'm feeling it, but it ain't gonna, I ain't going to let it affect me no longer. Like, I know it's there, but God, I've already gave it unto you. 
And when we learn how to do things like that, man, we'll see ourselves moving forward even the more. Why? Because God said, I got something purpose and plan for your life, but you got to learn how to release some things out of your life. You got to know how to say, God, I'm not going to let anger and anxiety get the best of me. I'm going to learn how to deal with those uncomfortable moments because, yes, it was uncomfortable when I had to deal with it. Or it was uncomfortable when I had to face it. But I know, God, that in the midst of it all happening, you already got a promise to fix that thing and make it better than ever. When you're navigating this journey called Christian life, you're going to face some things that will try to snatch your joy away. You're going to face some things that are going to try to get you off track. But I'm telling you the truth that if you learn how to say, God, if I can cast this thing on you, I can continue to move forward with greater purpose and fulfill your plans and promises for my life. Life. Look what he says. He says, humble yourself. And I thought about it from this perspective, y'all, that everything that was geared to problem hurt you was actually geared to humble you. How many know that sometimes when you face things in life, it really was to show you yourself? Honestly, like, God, who am I in this situation? And who would I be after this? Some of us have become our worst person in the most hurtful places. Like to, to the point we don't even, anybody, ever, you have been so hurt and you looked at yourself like, why are you acting like that? Like, why are you letting that get you off track like that? Did you not hear what God had already promised you? Like, did you forget what God said about that? And so many times, we, we, we easily forget. But God said those moments that you thought was geared to hurt you, man, was geared to humble you. Amen. I'm telling you, I, I was saying to somebody, I think a couple weeks ago, the Bible said, I said, that thing that you thought was meant to defeat you was actually geared to complete you. I mean, God was trying to really add something in your life. I believe that every trial we face, it has a way of maturing us into everything that God really wants us to be. When you learn how to move forward after you don't face some stuff, man, that's going to really show the world that, man, whatever the devil meant for evil, God turned it around for the greater good of your life. Because I don't know, you don't know, as a matter of fact, nobody don't know who is actually depending on you to not quit during the fight and allow God to continue to move in your life. So that's why I say you've got to cast these things on God because he cares for you. And the Bible said that his mighty hand will lift you up in due time. I like this moment because somebody may say to yourself right now, it's time right now. Because I'm tired of dealing with this. I'm tired of being where I'm at right now. I'm tired of this pandemic. I am so tired of the pandemic. See, I can't hug nobody. I hope we ain't in no math for the next five years. Jesus. No, we won't be. I'm like, when is this? I said, God, when is this due? How much more trouble we got to face? I get reports and people tell me, Pastor, I'm sick. I'm like, God, come on. God said, this is a season you're in. If you, don't have, you still got to proclaim the goodness of God in the midst of everything that people are going through right now. This is, you, think about when somebody getting sick, that doubt start kicking in. That despair. I mean, even the moment where they get disappointed in who God is. God, I thought you were going to keep me. I said, I have. You able to say what you thought I would, you still here? It may be something on you, but you still... Watch me when I bring you through it, you're going to still be. I'm telling you, in the midst of this moment, God said that if you just cast your cares upon me, I in due season, because your time is due, but you got to understand that that's something I got to do in you. See, due time for God actually is dependent upon what you allow him to do in you. And sometimes people say, well, where my due season going to come? I'll be saying, when are you going to let God do what he's supposed to do on the inside of you so that he can do time, make time do for you? Because what God said, I need to make sure something is happening on the inside of you so you'll know that I am God all by myself and there's nobody else like me. And I believe that when we understand that, we'll walk in the goodness of God 
and fulfill his full purpose. Amen? I got but one more to say. I'm going to get out of here. I promise. I'll show y'all going to be real short today. Because when things change, trust God more. Somebody shout, when things change, I'm going to trust God more. When your health change, trust God more. When your finances change, trust God more. When your situation change, trust God more. And I was reading in, the, in Psalm chapter 37, verse number 5, I believe, is where I'm going to be at the day real quickly. I'm leaving you with the scripture because I just want you to hear this because this is where we are. And it's where I got next week and the week after, I just believe it's going to just bring all this to light. Because I had to interject this moment because I met, I've dealt with, I've faced, and I've seen many dealt with so many things and changes during this season. Just in the last few weeks, man, there's been so many changes in so many lives. I mean, people's lives, I, could, I mean, just the reports, things are happening, with, even within our ministry. And God said, don't get your eyes off of me. Don't get your eyes off of me. And I'm telling you, don't get your eyes off of him. You can look at what's happening and miss what God has happening. You can get so caught up. Well, I want to, I want to. God said, that's, see, that's what you're going to get caught up in that. Because what God is doing is beyond what we think. Amen. He says this. I like this because I'm reading from the English Standard Version of, 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 uh, of Psalms 37 and 5. It says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust him, oh my God, and he will act. And I like this part because it says that when we trust him and once we commit our ways to him, he going to act. See, I thought about when God acts, it keeps us from acting up. Amen, somebody. Because sometimes when things don't work out our way, we act up. Oh, my God. When, when we deal with some uncomfortable changes... If we don't allow God, if we don't come in our ways to God, we're going to act up. Because some of us this close, amen, we only been saved. It only take an incident. For some Christians, to just, we all the way back. Think about, okay, I said you, you can face some things in life. It'll make you say, well, let me just, let me just backslide for five minutes, God, and just, I can fix this one myself. I promise you, God, it'll be all right after I get, deal with this joker. God said, no, no, you don't. Uh uh. He said, you commit your ways to me. Trust me, and I will act for you. That's why you got to be very sensitive to the voice of God when you face uncomfortable situations because it will show who you really are. When you get to a place where you can't handle life on your own or you don't know what to do, it'll show what you've been committed to the whole time. See, commitment doesn't start once you face a trial. Commitment starts way before anything ever happens. Why? Commitment is the fact that I'm connected to something before I ever see any result. See, if I'm committed to something, it don't, I don't care if it changes. I don't care if it goes my way. I don't care if it, I'm committed to it. See, if you're in a relationship, you're committed to it. It don't matter if it's bad. It don't matter if it's good one day. It don't matter if you face a trial. Why? Because commitment says I stick to what it is until I see the outcome I want to see. And so God is saying if you ever want to deal with some things in your life, when you face changes or when things change, trust me more. God said, trust him more. Why? Because if you are trusting in him, he will act on your behalf so you don't have to act up and embarrass not only yourself, but him as well. Because what happens when we don't act right or we don't act the way God has purposed us? People wonder where our God is in the first place. And I'm telling you the truth, man. We face some things. And I've seen some things face that are, 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 are moments where you want to act up. But God said, if you want to ever keep on the path that I got for you, learn how to deal with these disappointments. Understand that, man, and the things that are uncomfortable, maybe the things that I, 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 that I elevate you, I'm going to make some things uneasy for you. And when you ever, ever see change, happen in your life, you got to trust me more. 
And that's what God is saying in this particular season of our ministry, in our life as we're navigating this journey, because we're still navigating it. Because how are we going to get there? We're going to have to go through some things. There are going to be some mountains we're going to have to climb. Oh, I know that when people heard a few weeks ago, man, this, this thing is cold. God said, no, that, I don't expect for us to just slide on in there. There ain't nobody upset but the enemy right now. I know that every time you're trying to move forward in God's purpose, the enemy gets more upset at you. He says, no, I can't let them get there that easy. I can't let you change. I'm going to cause more things to happen in your life. I know you forgave him. I know you forgave her. But it ain't over. I'm a, the enemy always trying to cause some other extra things to take place so that you can question where God is. Stay focused. Stay committed. Man, stay on your P's and Q's. If I can use that in church, P's and Q's, amen. Stay, stay vigilant. Don't let the enemy get you to a point where you forget who God is and respond like you never knew him. And so just stand firm, people of God, because this is, this is right where God wants us to be. I've seen it. I mean, regardless of all that's taking place in this world, God is still God, and he's still good. Amen.